One. One is a number representing an amount of things. You probably have a rough idea of what one thing looks like. And you probably have a rough idea of what a hundred things look like. It's just ten rows of ten columns, after all. But what about a million? A billion? There are eight billion people on Earth, but can you picture all of them? What's the biggest number you can think of? I'll give you a minute to think, but before you do, remember infinity is not a number. But go ahead and shout them out whenever. If you've ever played an idle game like Adventure Capitalist or Cookie Clicker, you probably know some pretty big numbers. For example, I have two septendecillion cookies in Cookie Clicker. That's a two with 54 zeros. A humble deck of cards is also a source of a very large number. There are only 52 cards in a deck, but how many ways can we shuffle them? Well, 52 factorial, or 52 times 51 times 50 times 49, and so on. This is roughly equal to 8 times 10 to the 67, or 8 with 67 zeros. To give you a reference point, it is estimated that the Milky Way contains roughly 2.4 times 10 to the 67 atoms. That means that there are more ways to shuffle a deck of cards than there are atoms in the entire galaxy. Now, that's already an astronomically huge number, but we can always add more zeros, can't we? A Google is a one with a hundred zeros. We can also write that like 10 to the power of 100. Going larger, a Googleplex is a one with a Google zeros, which we can write like 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100. And of course, we can keep stacking this exponent higher and higher. But to reasonably write this, we need a new form of notation. Multiplication is just repeated addition. So three times four, is equal to three plus three plus three plus three. And exponentiation is just repeated multiplication. So three to the power of four is three times three times three times three, or four copies of three. Tetration is repeated exponentiation. So three tetrated to four means a power tower of threes, four high. Or three to the power of three to the power of three to the power of three. Working down from the top, that equals 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 27, or 3 to the power of more than 7 trillion, which is a number that has more than 3 trillion digits. Continuing further is difficult to visualize, so we use what's called up arrow notation. One up arrow represents exponentiation, and two up arrows represent tetration. Three up arrows represents repeated tetration, or pentration. We can also write up arrows like this, with the superscript representing the amount of up arrows. And n arrows represent b number of repeated n minus one arrow operations. So three hexated to three means three pentrated to three pentrated to three. Gram's number is up arrows taken to the extreme, where G0 is equivalent to 3 hexated to 3, already an unfathomable number, and Gn is equivalent to 3 and 3, with Gn minus 1 arrows in between, meaning G1 will have 3 hexated to 3 arrows, and G2 has G1 up arrows, and so on. Gram's number is G63. And believe it or not, it has some sort of mathematical use, as an upper bound for the Gram-Rothschild theorem, for which I do not have time to get into today. Now to go higher, let's play a game of trees. 
In this game, we will have different colored seeds, which we connect together with branches to form trees and make a sequence of trees. There are three rules. The nth tree in the sequence cannot have more than n seeds. No tree can contain any earlier trees. And the nearest common ancestry rule also applies here. So this tree would contain this one because these two nodes share a nearest common ancestor. For the function tree of n, we get n colors of seeds to work with. And tree of n is equivalent to the maximum number of trees in the sequence we can make with n colors. Tree of one is one because we only have one color to work with. And if we try to make another tree, well, that tree contains the first. For tree of two, we have two colors. So we can have this green dot, then just this red dot. But if we try to go further, we run into an issue. No matter what we do, each tree contains one of the previous. However, if before we use two red dots to make this tree, then we can have three trees because the third tree does not contain the previous. So tree of two is three. Now, tree of three. Let's start off with the same single dot we have, but then we can make this tree and this tree and that one and that one and that one, and we can go on and on and on, but not forever. The number of trees in the sequence is still finite, but it's unfathomably large. So large, in fact, it puts Crom's number to shame. To give you a point of reference on how fantastically large this number is, an extremely weak lower bound for tree of three is this. Grom's function iterated this amount of times. That is just crazy sauce. That's how large this number is. But we don't have to stop at tree of three. Tree of four is provably finite and much, much greater than tree of three. In fact, we can put any positive integer into the tree function and it's still finite. What that means, we could put tree of Grom's number or tree of tree of three or tree of tree of tree of tree of Grom's number. These numbers are so huge that we really start to lose the meaning of them. And to be honest, do they have any real world applications? Eh, not really, but they are pretty cool. And if anybody ever asks you, what's the biggest number? Well, you can just say tree of 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 tree of